You know what it is? It is summertime. It's where you wake up and every day there's magic in the air and the open road is calling. And today we are going to start the epic road trip in the 2019 Dodge Durango RT. This is actually my personal vehicle and many of you know that I purchased this on Christmas Eve and I promised you a road trip and this is the road trip we're going on. I'm gonna fuel up right over there and then I'm gonna tell you where we're heading. I'm sure some of you already know if you saw last year's road trip video in my Chrysler 300S Hemi. So this here being the RT is a 5.7 liter V8 and we'll go over it as we get to our destination and there'll be many, many, many parts to this video and I'm gonna just roll unedited and just show you the road trip. And I'll just go over some of the details here to show you why this is one of the best road trip vehicles you can take. Obviously, the seats in the back are captain's chairs. That was an option. So was the sunroof over here. So I have some options on here that I chose to make this more of like an, uh, a road trip worthy vehicle. I didn't get the tow package. I didn't get the roof rack. I didn't get all wheel drive. So we are stuck with a very, very sort of basic Durango, but a very luxurious Durango at the same time. And well, let's go over some of the stats. It's Destroyer Gray, and I forgot the name of the interior color, but it's obviously red. This is what it looks like. Also, <clears throat> I'll tell you what exactly you should do before you head on on a road trip. So since we're doing that today, let's go over that. Destroyer Gray, Durango RT, looks really good. First thing you wanna do is make sure your oil change has been done and your maintenance has been done and you have everything all taken care of. Obviously, any vehicle you would do that. Check your tires, obviously air pressure, but make sure there are no damages to the uh, tires themselves. And in this case, you'll see that I have the uh, wheel locks here. You wanna make sure you have the adapter for that in the glove box or what I do is I keep it by the uh, I keep it by the, the lug uh, wrench itself. So in the back, you'll see our captain's chairs. I like them because when you get inside, oh yeah, we have individual screens for left and right side passengers. So that's cool. You could also throw in I'm assuming uh, a Chromecast in each seat so you can Chromecast or just uh, use an HDMI adapter for whatever device you're gonna use. And there's a DVD slot in the center console there under the armrest. And these can easily go away. And there are, uh, there are remotes. Uh, there's a remote and then there's wireless headsets which I haven't even opened up because I've never really used this car. I'll explain that as well. So we have our USB charging ports, we have heated seats back here, and our air vent controls. This sends it to the floor or up here in the in the um, center, which is great. And then we also have HVAC controls here, which can be controlled and locked out up front. And we have really cool lighting in here that kind of like swivels so you can point the light where you want it or need it, which is even cooler. And we also have air vents here in the roof so you can rotate and angle them how you would want to be uh, comfortable, which is great. And then the best part is I can also pull that lever and recline. So on a road trip, if you're riding with somebody, definitely take a Dodge Durango. And this is how much room I have. Um, I didn't even know there was a grab handle here. That's kind of funny. There's a lot of room back here and some people may knock the Durango, but I think they just don't understand the Durango. This is awesome. Of course, I have my armrest here and you can get a center console, but only if the interior is black. So I didn't get the center console option and there is a third row, but instead I have stuff I need for my road trip. Obviously you want to have a case of water and in here I have some like beef jerky and some uh, sugary, slightly sugary drinks. I have more drinks over there. 
basically when you're on a road trip you know you might get a flat tire you might encounter something crazy so you might be on the road for half a day uh, on the side of the road for half a day and you don't want to go without anything to snack on or anything to drink so bring more than you expect especially if there are more people if there were two or three people in here I'd have two cases of water and uh, I used to do an ice chest as well but um, I just don't do ice chests anymore I don't have a garage I don't have a place to store it but you should take an ice chest throw some drinks in there keep things cold that would be awesome uh, so, you know, basically get your car checked two weeks before you go on your trip. That way you have time to fix it and you don't have to like stress out with a mechanic not having enough time or maybe taking longer than normal. You want to make sure your car is ready to go. Tires, brakes, oil change, any other fluids. And then when you hit the road, um, yeah, the best thing you can do is just fill up and go. Before you really do that, though, you do want to check the weather of where you're going to be or where you're passing through when you get there. So you have a few things to consider. And then I'll show you along the way. I'm actually going to be crossing a few time zones, so that should give you an idea of how big this trip is going to be. And, of course, you're going to plan your trip, and you want to make sure that your time zones are accounted for. Now, fortunately, and this is something that your cell phone's not going to do, I have GPS built into this vehicle. Some people de depend on their phone to do GPS, and let me tell you something. When you use your phone, where I'm going, you're going to lose reception, and when you lose reception, your phone's going to do something called dead reckoning, which is going to use the GPS, but it doesn't know your speed, and it doesn't know a few other factors. So what you do when you use your phone for GPS, tethered to your vehicle with auto, Android Auto or Apple CarPlay, if your vehicle doesn't have GPS, is you're gonna lose your ability to have accurate GPS. Plus, when you're in a place with no reception and you need to find a hospital, a hotel, a restaurant, a sheriff, anything, you need reception to find those things. Whereas here in the vehicle, I have a database of every point of interest in this vehicle. There's like a six gig database now supplied by Dun and Bradstreet and Magellan and Garmin and everything is sort of like built into a system so that even without GPS reception it knows the speed of the vehicle it'll do dead reckoning especially if I'm off-road just there are benefits to having a built-in GPS system and this is why and you'll see along my route what I'm talking about so I do not rely on cell phones I don't I used to cross the country without phones or GPS but Having GPS is great so that you can find things. Now, of course, you know, businesses may come and go, but you're gonna have an idea of where where things are, especially if you're gonna go off the beaten path. I don't recommend that either. I once did a trip to Albuquerque in a Volkswagen Jetta diesel on my other channel, Diesel Drives, and I went out in the middle of nowhere, like through Roswell and stuff, and there was nothing. And that was the most unsafe uh, experience ever because you can't find fuel you can't find hotels there's no food and when you get off the interstate and you take those other highways I don't I don't that's not my thing some people like it I do not anyway um, we're gonna go fuel up there's pretty much long lines everywhere out there but uh, let's do this I'm gonna make this my intro video oh man this is so comfortable so I wish someone was with me. I, I uh, had a friend who was gonna come along, but he has a press vehicle that I wouldn't pass up. It was uh, the Jeep Gladiator. So uh, sorry, Derek, if you were uh, planning to come along, maybe next time. But basically, this is gonna be an epic trip, and this is an epic vehicle to do it in. What I would do personally is if, if like my brother came along or something, uh, one of us would sit in back, so most likely the, the right rear passenger seat, recline this seat, and then the front seat, which can't be controlled back here by the way, in some vehicles like the Kia K900 and the S-Class and the Volvo S90, you can control the front seat from back here, but basically what I would do is I would move this seat all the way forward, and then you would have a lot of leg room, and then you would be able to lay down like this too. And now you've got like a first class experience in the cabin, and who wouldn't want that? So when you think about the vehicles you're gonna buy and lease and all that, uh, think about their capability too. That's why I bought this vehicle. I got rid of my 300S after the road trip and got this vehicle because 
it was a couple grand more, but it had the power tailgate, it had reclining rear seats, it had, uh, well, this has the uh, screens for the passengers, and all added up, it, it came out to like another $6,000. Now, this has a lot of options. It's not fully loaded, but to me, it was worth it. And there are a lot of automotive journalists in Texas who have Dodge Durango's. So this is why. And uh, yeah, let's get on with the experience, shall we? I think it's time to fill this thing up. I'm trying not to wait in line, but I guess we'll just have to ch chat and cut, something like that. All right, let's do this. Put the seat back up. There we go. Show you the uh, trunk as well. So plenty of room back here and um, more room than I need actually. But if you needed an ice chest and stuff or maybe you were gonna go, go get some things on your trip or whatever, you've got plenty of room back here. And a third row, which, uh, well, maybe I'll show you when I get where I'm going. And uh, yeah, it's down here. I haven't driven this car in a long time. I can also close that from the inside, but I can get along on my trip here. Okay, so up front, you'll see I have 4,569 miles on this vehicle. There you go, right there, 4,569. There you are. And, uh, well, I idle a lot, so my average MPGs has been 13.8. And I do have a trip computer here, so let me just go through that. You'll see... Uh, now you may think like, oh, that's terrible, but I haven't reset my trip computer since I bought the vehicle. So 4,569 miles is what I have on the car. That's what I have on my trip computer and you'll see 13.8 MPGs. Now here is the really cool part about having built-in GPS and in general, the award-winning Uconnect system. It's amazing. So we're gonna go to nav. Now we can go to information and then we can go to trip computer. Hey, check out that top speed there. <laughs> hmm, we're gonna reset. Yeah, we're gonna tr clear trip data. Okay, so now what we have here is moving average speed, maximum speed, time traveled, time spent moving, time spent stopped. And then we're gonna have distance to final destination, vehicle speed, right? So we're going to use this and then we're going to enter in our uh, destination in this system. And we're going to do that after we get some fuel because, uh, well, the thing is, with this vehicle, I bought it Christmas Eve and only having 4,500 miles on it, I work from home and then I get press cars every week. So I don't really drive it. I've taken it to the car wash every once in a while. I might have taken it to Austin two or three times. I don't even remember, but this has a ridiculously low amount of miles. It still smells new in here. Everything in here is just absolutely perfectly clean because I've never used it. And part of that is like, even if I did have a job in commute, I would have like what, 10,000 miles on here? And it would just be going to and from work, to and from Costco, to and from wherever. And that's kind of a boring existence. So it's great to have multiple cars, but it's even better to have a car just for a specific purpose, which is a utility purpose. In this case, it's travel and like a truck. I mean, I picked up cabinets from Ikea and threw them in the back here. I remodeled my kitchen and everything fit in the back. So it's kind of stupid to have a vehicle just to commute with. Why pay a lease payment on a car just to get to and from work? In my luxurious life. I don't commute anymore because I'm smarter than that. And so now I'm like, well, I need to put miles on my car because this is just ridiculous. In fact, I hardly drive this car and the fuel tank is always full. I always keep it full. So wherever I go, I come back and like I get to three quarters, I fill it up. So I've noticed that as I've been running this fuel tank down, the fuel has been really old and really kind of like stale. Uh, so it's great to take this on a road trip and just kind of cycle everything through and clear its throat and stretch its legs and that's what we're gonna do. So uh, let me get my seatbelt on. And 
and let's put it in reverse. We got our backup camera, cross traffic alert, all that. And let's see, yeah, pretty clear me. Literally, we're gonna refuel and then head to our destination. So we'll do that right now. <clears throat> Tell you, these people in Costco are really aggressive. <clears throat> They're always in a hurry to fill up. And, uh, you know, I don't think Costco is the best fuel, but the advantage here to these FCA vehicles is that even with a V8, premium fuel is not required in the 5.7 liter. It may be in the 6.2 Hellcat. That's supercharged and it may be in the SRT that's 6.4 liters but in the 5.7 it says you may use 87 89 all the way up to 93 and um, I found that if I use 87 octane the engine sounds throatier for some reason it's weird but it does and then when I use 93 octane which we have in Texas um, this thing feels a little faster but I mean there's really no gain to it we might see a gain on fuel efficiency, but I don't really care because we have other tricks in here. We have eco mode. So eco is a mode that enables or disables the ability for the vehicle to go into four cylinders. So as we're traveling on the highway or on the road and we're not putting much stra stress or strain or load on the engine, it goes from eight to four cylinders. And then in the blink of an eye, using a thing called MDS, it goes back into eight cylinders. So you can turn that off in this vehicle. You can't do that in the 300, but I, I'm assuming you can turn it off here because that means you can tow. And so when you're towing, you don't want it to go into four cylinders. And of course we do have a sport mode. There's no sport mode on the transmission, just a manual. So it's a little different from the 300, but we still have more of the same, but a few of a few features that are kind of like a little better. So I like having eco off when uh, I'm driving around in the city and it will retain this when you get back in the vehicle. If you keep it off, it stays off. I also like the quick fuel up here because the fuel tank doesn't have a fuel cap. You just pop the lid, you fill it up, you go. Um, yeah, it's pretty convenient. Makes for quick fill ups. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset the trip computer. After a full tank and I'm gonna reset trip B and then we will set the uh, destination to uh, our first stopover. What is what has taken these people so long? How hard is it to fill up a vehicle? I just don't understand. I mean, when I reset stuff and things, I don't do it as soon as I fill up at the pump. I move away and then I reset. This is pretty frustrating. Or maybe your car can't start. No, you're just being selfish. Okay, so I'm gonna refuel. And I'm going to pause this, and I'll be right back. Okay, so I just filled up. We're leaving the gas station here. I'm going to go reset everything. Uh, right about... How about right here? This is a cool spot to do it. Lovely. All right. Boom. We are on trip B, I think. Yeah, okay. And we are going to reset, so... Trip B resets after a certain amount of time. Trip A, I think, doesn't. So we're going to hold this down. All right. Trip B uh, is reset. Trip A is set to uh, the original odometer, so 50, 45, 69, and we have 45, 69. So I'm going to keep that there, and we'll see during my trip how much the overall average increases on highway driving, and then we're going to see what I get on this trip. So I'm wasting time right now. We're going to go ahead and reset the information on the trip computer. Okay, uh, reset. Yep. <clears throat> so now we'll see vehicle speed, uh, my distance I've traveled, overall average speed, and then we're going to see moving average and then maximum. We're going to see if I can hit a V max here. 
And then uh, time spent moving and time spent stopped, which would be really cool to do. And now, where are we going? Well, we are gonna go to uh, an intersection and we're gonna spell the city E L Paso. That's the one. And then the street is Airway. Airway Boulevard. And the intersecting street is Interstate Interstate 10. So we'll just go, let's go like here. We're going to go this way and we're going to go. Maybe it'll find it if we go to 10. Nah. Let's see. It's not really a street though. Hmm. Tell you what, we'll just go to the city center. Uh, where to? Point on map, POI, address, recent, intersection, city center. E. El Paso. Okay. Which I think puts us really close to where we need to be. It's 573 miles from here. And if we zoom in. Yeah, it'll be okay. Let's see if we go to... Let's see if I can find Airway on there. Yeah, we're gonna be near the airport. There it is. Airway Boulevard. There's like a Starbucks here and stuff. Uh, I wanna be right there. Can I do that? I guess not. That's where I wanna be. There we go. So route two. So nine hours, 13 minutes, uh, arrival at 9.40 p.m. Now this is actually accounting for the time adjustment. So I do cross a, uh, a, uh, a time zone right about here on Interstate 20. And then we're gonna go use the fast route, and then uh, let's see. I want to whatever alternatives. We're not using toll roads and stuff, so that should be okay. Short six nineteen, and then Eco. So Eco is the fast route, which is fine. Um, the short route takes us see off Interstate twenty, and I guarantee you there will be no services along here that will help us. So we're not gonna take that route. We're gonna take the. Uh, fast route stay on the interstates that way also if you're on a less traveled road and you have a breakdown or you have issues let me fix that there you go and you have issues you want at least truckers or people to actually like stop and help you know they're gonna have phones that or CB radios or things that are gonna work let's just say you have a dead battery or your phone battery is dead or I don't know shit happens so you want to stay on the interstates so that you have more coverage now uh, let's go we're gonna do this. Gonna Please do this. proceed to the highlighted route. Oh, look at that, and there's traffic immediately. <laughs> All right, we are in drive, and we are going to set off as soon as that car goes by, and that car goes by, and that car goes by, and that car goes by. Holy moly. And that car comes over. Man, this place is a zoo today. This is why I don't go to Costco on weekends. We're just gonna go this way. Costco gas, by the way, is like one of those uh, top tier things, which simply means it has a detergent. It doesn't mean it's a good fuel other than the fact that it has a detergent, which is only ideal for vehicles that have direct injection and uh, it reduces the carbon buildup. I really hate Costco. I hate Costco. They have some things, but the people that come here, especially on weekends, you'd have to be sadistic to enjoy coming to Costco. Oh, look at that uh, sunshade. Nice. Aspirational. Alright. So we're already averaging 4.7. Trip B. Very nice. <clears throat> I 
Oh, I forgot to put a water in the front here. I should do that right away. I don't want to have to keep stopping for water, so I got two cup holders. I got a uh, spot for another drink over there, one here in the door, so I'm going to grab a few. Forgot to do that and stock up on my cup holders here. That way I don't have to stop 300 miles in or whatever. I can just keep going. The only thing I'd have to stop for is to obviously take a leak. All right, so we're going to do that. We're going to open the trunk from here. Grab a drink. Or two or three or four. I'll have one of these. 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 Okay. And you may think, hey, you left the uh, door open, and that's right. I did. And that one there. Put this here. Put that one there. And then that one will go right there. Okay. And I do have more cup holders in the back down there. And of course, my trunk is open. And I'm going to close it from up here. Nice. Listen to it quietly close. That's a nice feature because if you have someone sleeping in the vehicle, you can go out, get more things out of the trunk or whatever, do, do your thing, and then that will close. And it shouldn't wake up anybody because there's no slamming. In the Chrysler 300, there was no power trunk, and that was really annoying for a luxury vehicle not to have. Look at the wine now at the Costco. I mean, I know fuel is really cheap. I think it was 227 a gallon. I don't I don't take receipts anymore because I don't like soy paper, but look at that. That's ridiculous. Okay, we're gonna hit the road. Now uh, I do have spare batteries with me so that my phone doesn't die, and my gimbal also needs to be charged as well. So what I'll do is I'll kind of just like get this shot leaving Dallas and then uh, I'll catch up with you when I get to some really important parts of Texas or places of interest and I'll just keep you updated probably every hundred miles. Uh, I do like the fact that this has the optional Harman Kardon stereo because I always believe in upgrading the stereo and uh, within reason. The, the $6,000 or $5,000 Bang & Olufsen system on the Audi wasn't really worth it, but it was a lot better than the Bose stereo, because Bose blows in most situations. But I have a great stereo in here. I have rear-wheel drive, so I have no front-wheel bias. It's it's just a pure, straight, in true tracking feet, vehicle. Turn sharp right towards Coit Road. Take the next sharp right towards oh. Coit Road. See, she wants to reroute me off of this traffic. Uh, I'm going to ignore her. I'm not going to take her advice. We're going to stay on 75 and then take... Route recalculation. Something. Oh, she really doesn't want me to take that route. Where does she want me to go? After 1,000 feet, keep left onto US 75 northbound. Refused. Let's see where she wants us to go. Oh, yeah. Uh, that makes more sense, actually. Avoid all this traffic here. Okay, I believe it. What? What's this route? 121 to 30? 30? Oh wow, it connects to 20 right there. I know we want to be on Interstate 20. Interesting. Nice Porsche, by the way. Keep left. Exit the highway at exit 7. Okay, so like one of the downsides to having SUV is you get to hear all the cargo back there. All the plastic bottles and all the things that are like making squeaky noises or rustling noises. That's not my thing but uh, it's just how you have to deal with it. I don't have the cargo cover 
but it would be nice to have a way to just cover that so that I don't have to hear it. Traffic's moving pretty good here, so we're gonna stay on this portion, and then we're just gonna take 35 east down to Interstate 20. No need to uh, deviate too much, but I had kind of like an idea, and GPS has its idea. In 1,000 feet, make a U-turn, then keep left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We'll end up in the same space, basically. She'll just keep make talking to me. Make a U-turn, then keep left. No. <laughs> All right, so basically I'll leave you here. You know I'm going to El Paso, but that's just the first part of where I'm going to be. Recalculation. I'm going to deal with this nut job. And then, uh, yeah, I'll catch up with you later. So let me turn eco off, actually. I don't need eco right now. In three quarters of a mile, exit the highway and exit six. See, it's moving now. I don't know why people slow down. Okay, cool. Well, there you go. My road trip has started and we are now at 7.7 .7 MPGs. I would just assume that we're gonna get up to a pretty good exit amount. Exit the highway at exit six. I would, I'm gonna just say like 23. I've already done a road trip in a Durango RT back in like 2016. And that was the RT that didn't have this hood. This is the new SRT style hood. And this hood definitely keeps the car much cooler. You can see the, the temperature gauge there on the coolant. It had, doesn't even reach the half mar halfway mark. It never has. Make a U-turn. Then keep left. I know that might Make be annoying, but we'll just then put up with it for left. a second. Okay, so the oil temp's 222, and it's 98 Rocky degrees calculation. outside. So, being that it's 98 degrees outside, oil temp is cool. Uh, oil pressure, we can see our oil life, and voltage, tire pressure. Um, I did forget to bring a tire pressure gauge, but I'll have to deal with it because it's actually in my BMW, which is in Austin, so I can't do much about that. I could always buy one. Actually, the best place to buy stuff that you need is a truck stop. So Loves or Pilot or Travel America. There's always a bunch of truck stops, and they're going to have USB adapters, charging adapters, cables, cords. They even have coffee makers that go into your cigarette lighter. So a truck stop is always ideal to get stuff that you need. There's no need to go to Best Buy or Target, waste your time there, just truck stop, boom, out. And the prices are really decent because uh, it, it's all from China anyway. And you probably only need it to work for a couple days. I don't know how long that stuff lasts, but it's easier. It's just easier that way. All right, so she rerouted, which is good. And now is probably a good time to set radar cruise. So I'm going to set it here. Actually, not that one. Yeah, this one. So I have two different radar crews. That's the regular cruise, and then this one's radar cruise. And I'm going to take it up to a speed here. I'm going to set the speed. There we go. And we'll probably go to 70. There you go, 70. You can see down there, 70. And then the uh, distance between vehicles, I can adjust here. Shorter, or, or more distance, or shorter distance. So I'll keep it at uh, a short distance, you can see down there. Or I can change my display here. Where is it? There we go. And now we can see lane keeping and all that other stuff, radar and things. I don't have a heads up in here, but I do have a great display in the center. And it's not fully digital, it's only digital in the center. But still, like, radar cruise in the city, great. Uh, open radar, or non-radar, open cruise on the open road, great. This car does it all. And so we're just gonna enjoy this trip through Dallas, and then I'll catch up with you in 100 miles, or when I come across something interesting. So you're watching New Car Spin. I'm your host, Brian. I put the spin on new cars. This is my personal vehicle, the Durango. Like, subscribe, share with your friends, comment below. This is how I do road trips. Uh, yeah. I wish, uh, wish I had more time 
and it would be great to have someone with me to help with the camera and stuff like that. But I'm going to zone out to some tunes now, and I'll catch you in the next part to my video. See ya!